In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney for the Solemn Mass of the third Sunday of Easter. In our entrance antiphon, we cried out with all the earth to God in praise and rejoicing. For the God-made man has risen as a promise to us all. At a time of universal grief and horror at the multiple murders and injuries at Bondi Junction yesterday, including the stabbing of a baby, as well as celebration of the courage of the baby's mother, the policewoman, and other bystanders. We reflect upon our community's profound commitment to the value of every human life. In this Mass, we recommit ourselves and our community to that principle, even as we pray for eternal life for yesterday's victims. We acknowledge that all human life is made in the image of God, made for a full life on earth and eternal life in heaven, and so demands our reverence and protection, especially when most vulnerable. The attacks by Iran upon Israel today, escalating that terrible conflict in the Holy Land of our Saviour, also highlight the violence in human hearts and our need to find God's peace. Following last Monday's celebration of the Feast of the Annunciation, when God became an unborn child in the womb of our mother Mary, we celebrate the day of the unborn child today. So I salute my ecclesiastical twin by ordination, Archbishop Julian Porteous of Hobart. My brother priests, Mr. Paul Hanrahan of Family Life International and other pro-life leaders and friends. A warm welcome also to our seminarians, to the members of the Order of Malta, and to everyone present, both visitors and regulars, that we might rise this day from the tomb of violence and sin to new life with the Easter Lord, the Prince of Peace. Let us repent of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus. The same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact, we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes away our sins and not only ours, but the whole world. 
we can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God love, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. 
And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom Alekim Irene Humin Pax Fobiscum Peace be with you. So Jesus greets his disciples in today's Gospel and in his other post resurrection appearances too. It was, of course, his customary greeting, blessing and farewell, one common in the ancient Near East and the Greco-Roman world. The apostles followed suit, proclaiming peace in Jesus Christ. Paul opens and closes most of his epistles with peace be with you. Still today, people in Israel greet each other with shalom and in Gaza with al-salamu alakum, a greeting with a special poignancy in those parts at present. For Catholics, it has become the liturgical hello and goodbye. Bishops always begin Mass with peace be with you and often conclude it with go in peace, recalling the Easter Lord. But when Jesus offers us his peace, it comes as a spiritual package deal with his presence. Christians identified him with the Old Testament dream of a Prince of Peace. Luke's Gospel opens with a prophecy that in Jesus God will give light to those in darkness and dwelling in the shadow of death 
and guide them into the way of peace. That he will bring glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people of goodwill. As the scriptures unfold, we learn that true, lasting peace is a divine gift, resulting from an encounter with the God of peace in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Yet Jesus' post-resurrection appearances do not immediately provoke peace and calm. The Gospels relate reactions of fear and trembling, disbelief and confusion. Stranger or ghost, they aren't sure what they are dealing with. So he shows them his holy hands and side inviting not just doubting Thomas, but all of them to let go of their scepticism and encounter him in his glorious wounds. Only then does the mood change to recognition and joy, awe and worship. While bishops and clergy imitate the risen Lord in their greetings, they happily don't join him in showing their battle scars to the congregation. Instead, they show the wounded and glorious Christ by celebrating the Mass. Today's Gospel offers us the contours of every Eucharist since the first. To begin with, the disciples gather on a Sunday in a special place. Next, Christ enters, now in his priest, and greets them with his liturgical g'day, peace be with you. Then he reflects with them, Luke tells us, on everything written about him in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, opening their minds to understand the sacred texts so that their hearts burned. Finally, he comes to the breaking of the bread, where the disciples recognize him really present we see Christ in his priest receiving what has become the body and blood of the Lord and proving again that he is no ghostly figment of our imaginations but real and alive and present. And then he shares it with his disciples in Holy Communion. Finally, with go in peace, he sends us out so that in the words of our text today, repentance for the forgiveness of sins might be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. No matter where you go in the Catholic world, you can join 1.4 billion lay faithful, 5,600 bishops, 400,000 priests and 50,000 deacons called to gather on Sunday. No matter the language, ethnicity or particular church, wherever you are, there's something familiar about the structure and rhythm of the Mass. It's familiar 
because it's what we've always done. Ever since the Last Supper, Every Sunday we gather to break open the word and for the breaking of the bread, recognising Christ really present in word and sacrament, receiving him into our bodies and souls. No phantom, no stranger, no fantasy or wishful thinking, but the very Jesus who is the word made flesh the flesh made Eucharist, the Eucharist made church. No longer in fear and trembling, disbelief and confusion, we now recognise him with awe and worship, joy and peace. We don't just begin and end Mass with Christ's blessing of peace. In the middle, the priest says, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And then we offer each other a sign of peace. We express that physically with handshakes, bowing, looks of recognition as well as words. For this is no ordinary worldly peace we share. It is the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding. The peace of Christ that the world cannot give. The peace of Christ that transforms hearts and minds from hatred to love, from ignorance to wisdom. The peace of Christ that sends us out to serve every human person, especially the most vulnerable. This past week, the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith released a long-awaited document, Dignitas Infinita. It could not have been more timely. Here in Sydney and beyond, we are appalled and grieving the multiple murders and injuries at Bondi Junction yesterday, including the stabbing of a baby. And we pray for the dead, the injured, the traumatised and the grieving. We celebrate the courage of the baby's mother, of the policewoman who attended, and of other bystanders who assisted. The attacks by Iran upon Israel today, escalating that terrible conflict in the Holy Land, also highlights the reality of violence in human hearts and our urgent need for Christ's peace. The recent Vatican document re-articulates the concept of human dignity as developed in the Christian faith and the civilization it spawned. It celebrates that every person is created in the image of God. Everyone redeemed by his son, Jesus Christ. The prince of life and peace. Everyone destined to greatness on earth and in heaven. Talk of our ontological or intrinsic dignity means every human being is of incomparable worth, a value not conferred by the state or society, by popularity or self-regard. As creatures willed into being by the infinite God, 
our value is truly inestimable and cannot be reduced to our social contribution, economic value or human interactions. It cannot be reduced to our age or stage of development, our sex or race or the like. The gospel of life that the church never tires of proclaiming is that every human being from the moment of conception until natural death is a child of God, worthy of the reverence we show to the holy things. And every attack on the human being, a kind of sacrilege. The Vatican document also warns us against the fudging language used by some around human life at its beginnings and end to skirt around a fundamental truth that the unborn, the sick, the disabled and the elderly are as precious as the rest of us, but that because they are voiceless and powerless, we should be even more attentive to their dignity and rights, their care and support. If even the most innocent amongst us are unprotected, we are all at risk and every human right. To share in the Easter peace of Christ is to join him in experiencing God's unwavering love for all people, his care for those most at risk, his conferring on even the least of these, dignitas infinita, infinite dignity. Go in peace, Christ says at every Mass. Go forth, proclaiming repentance and renewal to all nations. You are my witnesses to life and love and peace. We profess our faith in the Lord, the giver of life, as we say. I believe in one God, the Father almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God allows us to experience emptiness that we may be filled with his love. Let us entrust our petitions to the risen Christ who gives us all that we need. For the Holy Church of God, that she may be defended from the snares of her enemies through the spirit of Christ who makes his home in her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the people of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those elected to represent us in state parliament, that they may serve the people of New South Wales with diligence and integrity, promoting the common good with special care for the welfare of all children, beginning with life in the womb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gospel of life to take root in the hearts and lives of all families, that Catholics everywhere will offer support and encouragement to pregnant mothers and stand up for the most vulnerable members of society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those stuck in the snare of sin, that the Lord Jesus may bring to repentance those in most need of his mercy and deliver them from darkness and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For couples who mourn the loss of life in the womb, that Christ who wept for Lazarus, his friend, may console them in their grief and fill them with hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For victims who suffer from acts of violence, especially those at Bondi yesterday, may their families be consoled by the healing love and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to join us in our prayers for peace in our time, for peace in the womb and in our families, for peace in our shopping centres, our city and our nation, for peace in the Holy Land and in all the world, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, we love you and we trust you. Hear and answer these prayers, which we humbly make to you through your Son, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice as your hands, and the prayers and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Richard and Danny, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. 
Amid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. We've just received a message from our Holy Father, the Pope. His Holiness, Pope Francis, was deeply saddened to learn of the violent attack in Sydney. And he sends the assurance of his spiritual closeness to all affected by this senseless tragedy, especially those who are now mourning the loss of a loved one. He likewise offers his prayers for the dead, the injured, as well as the first responders, and invokes upon the nation the divine blessings of consolation and strength. Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secretary of State. You may have noticed a change in the sanctuary. Father Ben Saliba is the new Master of Ceremonies, and Father Louis Barakat at last can, can celebrate Mass and in due course we'll have a new ministry. We thank Father Louis and we welcome our new Master of Ceremonies, Father Ben. At the conclusion of this Mass, I invite the Director of Family Life International, Father, pa Father Mr. Paul Hanrahan, to offer instruction on today's proceedings. Those of you that want to participate in today's Walk for Life, please remain in the church. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the mercy sender. Thanks be to God.
those who are here for the procession remain in the church. The archbishops will be back on the altar to lead the Regina Chale before we head outside and assemble for the procession. Mass has gone a little bit longer than usual, so we need to do that promptly. The order of procession will be the crucifix and the 